Yo, what's up? This is Massacre from Terror Universal, and I'm blowing it up in capital chaos TV. This is uh, Zoran Theodorovich with uh, Capital Chaos TV, uh, and we're hanging out with uh, Massacre from Terror Universal. How's it going, Massacre? It's going great so far, man. Thank you for having us. It's been a so far, Summer Slaughter has been a fucking amazing, amazing tour so far. So uh, we're having fun, man. Thank you for coming out. And uh, Masker is also known as Dave, who plays in El Nino. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's my other band. We have, I have two bands that I play for. And uh, right now we're in the stage of writing a new record. And so I'm out with Terra Universal throughout this year and all next year, more, most of next year, too, as well. And uh, what is it that uh, what is it in uh, Terra Universal that you're not that you don't get from uh, El Nino? Uh, it's just a different, totally different vibe. You know, with El Nino, it's more of an ethnic vibe uh, with Latino, you know, influences. With Terra Universal, it's more of a brutal vibe, more of an attitude, like punk rock mixed with metal and mixed with fuck you. <laughs> but uh, it's been, you know, I-, I wanted to do something with Terra Universal that I hadn't done before in my career. And I went, you know, and the mass, I thought it was a cool scape of being whoever the fuck you wanted to be. And uh, was there a particular masked band that uh, inspired you? Inspired, is there a particular masked band that inspires uh, uh, Terror was, Universal? I don't think it was a particular masked band. I think it was just the whole, you know, theatrics of, you know, like Ghost and, you know, Cradle of Filth and, you know, Dibby Burger and, uh, and, and Slipknot and Mushroom Head and Alice Cooper and fucking Kiss, you know? They, they, the way they did it, it was just like a, a, a attitude and it was delivered with theatrics. And I think that's what I want to do, is more about, worry about the theatric side and to be able to write a great record with great songs, with memorable songs that uh, were theatrical. We had a theatrical look to it, for sure. Now your uh, debut CDs came out in January, right? Yes, um, uh, make them uh, Make them bleed, right? Make them bleed out of January um, we were very fortunate and very blessed you know album came out and uh, we hit all the top 100 billboard uh, we hit it on four different charts in the billboard charts and uh, we right now are a little bit uh, over 5,000 units sold of the album so uh, we're very proud of the record records doing really well people are reacting uh, you know social media is reacting and uh, we're just happy to be here on, on the summer slaughter tour you know crushing for sure uh, Brad Hardy at uh, Minus Head put that out for you, right? Correct. Brad, man, is uh, a blessing to this band, for sure. I think he's a blessing to all the bands that I talked about on his, on his roster. Minus Head Records, you know, uh, he knows how to take care of the bands. And he the way he does it, you know, he's it's effortless, you know. He uh, worries about the bands. He gives a shit about how the bands present themselves. And, uh, you know, he the best way that I can just, you know, kind of say, think, say about him is that the label and him as the VP of the company, the president of the company, is uh, that he takes care of bands like band, like labels did back in the 80s, back in the late 90s, where they were just hands-on, they really gave a fuck about the band, and they were able to fund their bands for whatever they needed, marketing-wise and everything else. And uh, yeah, we're very proud to be on the label, and we're very happy that we're working with him. You were on Roadrunner for a while, you got to... Uh you were you were part of an era where there was excess excess and uh, a lot of money being uh, made and spent and blown. Yes. Do you uh, you look back at those days with much fondness? Uh, you know, it was a great time to put a put a, a band together. It was a great time to for music to thrive. You know, uh, the camaraderie between all the bands. Well, I made a lot of friends and during during the time between, you know. All of the bands, you know, too many to, to disclose, but uh, you know, it was it was a great time to put an, an album out and to put a band together. But uh, yeah, man, you know, it, it, the whole thing. Times have changed. You have to evolve as an artist. You have to evolve as a musician, you know. And you can't like sit there and cry over spilled milk and be like, oh, you know, oh, the way things used to be. I mean, you can't do that. You, things are where they were, and this is what it is today. So you either fucking grip it and you move forward and you tour and you bust your fucking balls to fucking perform and sell albums or you sit in a corner and fucking cry I choose not to cry <laughs> so that's, that's a good way of looking at things has all the Roadrunner era El Nino been released is there or is there some 
that have not? There's a couple of things that we ha- they didn't release uh, prior to actually signing to Roadrunner that we might be putting on an EP or something else. We don't re- necessarily want to milk the band and just throw shit out there just to make money. Because uh, b- believe me, we're not that type of band. We are. We, we want to put something out that we're proud of uh, at the end of the day. We've talked about doing a, DV- a live DVD. You know, and that El Nino's a very live band, so we talked about doing that. Um, like I said, right now we're not. I don't have any plans for El Nino for the end of this year and the beginning of the next because I'm ter- I'm just worrying about Terror Universal right now. This is my main priority and my main my main situation. You said it, you sold. It's just, so this is like five thousand copies have been sold since January. Is that right? Correct. Well. We actually were able to sell uh, almost 4,000 of those 5,000 and change um, first 30, 30, 30 to 40 days. So now, you know, it's a smaller process. Now that we're, now that we're on tour, we're be, all the numbers are beginning to pick up again because, we're, you know, we're on tour, we're selling them on tour, right. and so on and so forth. So, yeah, it's been great. And uh, how does the songwriting uh, differ for this band in El Nino? Um, you know, um, it didn't really differ that much in the sense of uh, with El Nino, everybody writes riffs, put it together, they put an album together. With this band, um, you know, we wrote a bunch of riffs and we actually were able to jam a little bit and go through the music, go through the motions. Uh, I'm really, really, you know, our guitar, our, our singer, um, Plague, you know, I'm a huge fan of his voice. He's a fucking great front man. He's an amazing singer, you know. He, uh, he sounds fucking pristine on stage as he does on record so i'm very fortunate to have him in the band i'm very happy that uh he, he's fucking crushing it man and he also directed the music videos for the singles correct yeah he's also a video director and he's uh directed his company uh film Facer has produced and directed both videos that we put out so far and actually working on the third video that we're doing right now which we're going to be working on the minute we get home for uh, our first active rock single you know, for a, a, bank, a song called Spines. Are, are, are all your lyrics pretty much escapism, or is there uh, something more deeper than that? We don't, you know, lyrics, videos or lyrics, you said? Lyrics. Lyrics, lyrics are, you know, uh, we like to be not so, so like, you know, give it out, give it out there. We want to be like, like when you, when you read a, a novel, you know, a lot of things are not just fed to you, you know. Okay. You make your own your, your your own understanding of what you're being fed. You know, Absolutely. you're giving something. Say, oh, this could be about you know a situation with a family member. This could be a person like your friend. It could be about your own personal situation. It could be about you being a fucking drug addict. It could be about you being an alcoholic. It could be about anything. You know, and we make sure that we're a little bit vague, so everyone can interpret their own story. You know. Yeah. How familiar are you uh, with the bands on the Summer Slaughter? Oh, I love the bands on Summer Slaughter. I mean, uh, Tina Barry to me, I mean, a great fucking band, great musicians. Uh, you know, Born of Osiris, one of my favorite bands on the tour. They are a fucking amazing live band. And, uh, you know, they, all the bands are just, they all complement each other, you know? And we're just like a, a big family rolling along from fucking city to city, crushing it. Do you, uh, do you know any of their songs? Can you, uh, how many Born of Osiris? I don't really know a lot of this stuff because I was actually introduced to them on this tour. I see. I've, I've learned about that whole genre uh, a lot more on the tour. I'm not, not going to lie to you and, and, and bullshit you about what I know and do not know. But, I, you know, I, I've become fans of these bands while we're on tour together, you know. So it's a great way. I mean, as, as, as I'm sure, they've never heard of Terror Universal sure, either. Sure, sure. And it's good that we tour together because then I've become friends with a couple of, uh, of the members of all the bands. And, you know, you start listening to each other's music. It's like, fuck, your shit's badass. No, your shit's badass, you know? That's awesome. Uh, how difficult was it? Uh, how difficult is it to nail down the first two singles? You know, uh, I've been doing this for a little bit. And uh, we don't like to really write songs with singles in mind. You write songs. And whatever comes out, you try to be artistically, uh, you know, as broad as you can be. And you put out a bunch of songs together, and then you kind of start figuring out, okay, this song is sounding more like an active rock type of, you know, of single, you know. And this song is kind of, kind of like a fucking brutal fuck you song, you know. And then you lay it all out, and then you start label Brad Hardy as well as you know our producer and a bunch of different people start chiming in. It's like, oh, that's how Spines became the single, you know. 
we were turning around and then it's everybody from our PR camp people to, you know, all the people that we work with, uh, they were like, man, that song Spines sounds like a fucking single. It sounds like a great single. And uh, we're like, yeah, we, we agreed, you know, because we felt that song could be an active rock single. So uh, we were going to be going home and uh, we're doing a video for Spines uh, sometime between uh, mid-August and beginning of September. And then that's why we're hitting the road again in October and November, which we're going to come out with a single and we're going to go to radio with a single and also on Shebang. You just worked that album, huh? Worked the fuck out of that record. Yep. What does uh, what does heavy metal mean to you? Lifestyle. Uh, I've been doing music since I was 17 years old, and I've been putting out records I've, uh, since I was 18. Um, I've been si- I've I've been through it all, man. I've been signed to labels, dropped from labels, fucked over by labels, ripped off by labels, gone to court, gone out of court, lost girlfriends, have lost homes, have lost everything, and gained everything. You know. Uh, to me, metals, heavy metal is a lifestyle. So lifestyle is it's not something that you pretend to be part of. It's part of you. And uh, you said Il Nino's uh, currently working on some stuff for uh, a possible release in what year? Next year. Next year. Next year. Yeah, towards, probably towards the middle or end of the year. Right now, like I said, I'm, I'm putting all, all my efforts into Terra Universal right now. Uh, you know, this, this band is very dear to me. It's very important to me. And... Uh, you know, we, we, like I said, we're going to be out all year round. We're going to not stop. We're going to be hitting many continents. We were already hit three continents before the album even dropped. We were in Australia, then we did Europe, and then we did United States. And now we are going back to Europe in January. We are, after that, going to go to Australia in March or April. I'm not sure yet. We're working it out right now. And then we're going to hit South, uh, South America and Mexico in October or November of this year. Uh, that, will that be put out by Brad and Minus Head as well? Yeah, well, the, any, anything we do, we'll put, we're putting out with Brad, yeah. Okay. The band signed to him exclusively. Perfect. Well, thank you for your time. Uh, thank you. Uh, I want you to be safe on this tour. Do you have any final words to anybody that might be yeah, watching I want to this? I say thank you. Thank you for having our back. Uh, thank you for helping us have some success. And uh, I just want to thank you to our label. Thank you to Brad Hardy. Thank you to you for taking out the time. Because if it wasn't people like you, the music would not go anywhere. So I appreciate that. Absolutely. All right, brother. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Thank you.